Hey guys, Mr. Real Talk Only today, showing you a review of Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Now, the things I'm going to show you today is the, the boot up time, some performance issues, and the changes that they have from Windows 7. Alright, first thing you notice, this is your new start menu. It's not the same as the old left little dialog box used to pop up in the corner. Now, uh, to go to desktop, this is your desktop stuff. To access, I guess you can call it a toolbar. You uh, bring your mouse down to the bottom and go up. This is how you go to your settings, the power down, notifications, language, uh, brightness, volume, network, stuff like that. And then you go to start menu, you can go to your devices. This is like a Windows search, but it's just a new design. You can share stuff on here. You know, like your, your widgets. Start menu, go right there, just put in the left corner. This is almost like a Picasso thing, I guess you can call it. Your new start menu. All your apps, everything, recycling bin, Xbox. Everything's compatible with Xbox now, all Microsoft stuff. Now, Microsoft has something called SkyDrive now. You can save all your files on it, almost like iCloud. Messaging, desktop. Internet Explorer is new, too. They have a new design. Everything's full screen. Your search bar at the bottom right here. All your stuff like that. Everything's powered by Bing. To get out of it, you go to the right, swipe up. Or you can go to the left, in the left corner, go back to Start Menu. Now, uh, Task Manager is no longer called Task Manager. It is now called uh, Resource Monitor. It's almost the same thing. Just got a little bit different design, almost like everything else. Your overview, CPU usage, memory, disk, network, stuff like that. Same old stuff. Now, this is the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. It expires... Um, not sure when it expires, but the website that I got the product key from that Microsoft released will tell you. I want to put that link down in the description. I'm running this on Parallels because I like to switch back and forth, especially because I like to play uh, Microsoft Flight right here. That's about the only thing I use Windows for. The boot time is really fast. I'm going to show you all that at the end. <clears throat> now, um, what else? Oh, they have uh, full screen things. Like, I guess you can call it your running in the background. Like... I don't know, access that. Alright, see right there. The only thing I got open right now, it's still running even though I got out of it. It's, oh, oops. It's kind of hard to get it to work. I'm not really used to it. Anyway. There, click on that. It brings me back to what I was. Now go back to start. Desktop. Now if I want to get rid of that, you just right click it. Close. It's almost like another little sidebar thing. Uh, you got your volume, stuff like that. Time, clock. <clears throat> Let's go back to the start menu. Now you got remote desktop. This is the newly designed pinball. I gotta say, I kinda like it. Everything's animated too. Uh, skip the Xbox Live. Now, one thing that Windows is trying to do, Microsoft is trying to do Windows 8, they're making everything like one cross-platform for their mobile devices and their desktops and their laptop devices. Everything's like, involves gestures, like example for this, it doesn't use the standard little keys and spacebar anymore. You click and you pull back this and you release. And then you gotta click and pull this. This is, I don't really like this, this is kinda hard. And you just kinda kinda click back and forth. Hold the click button and just slide back and forth. Yeah, I don't like it. Anyway, escape. Go up to the side and back to the start menu. Right. Uh, mm, oops. I never really messed with messaging, but you got to sign up to your Microsoft account, I guess. I'm not in with Microsoft. Pretty much the only thing I have Microsoft is my school computer. Now, this is actually has a really fast boot time, which I'm about to show you right now. And this is running on... uh. 21.5 uh, inch iMac with a uh, 2.8 gigahertz Intel i7 8 gigabytes of RAM and a hard disk, not a solid state drive. I right, go to settings, power, shut down. Right, click. I had to uh, run this on the trial version of Parallels because I wasn't about to go pay for it just so I can show a YouTube video, but here we go. I'm not timing this, but y'all can if y'all want. Pretty fast. 
especially for Windows. This is almost as fast as, or a little bit faster, Mac OS X. But with my uh, with OS X Mountain Lion coming out, then Apple might have pulled some strings and made it a little bit faster too. So we'll see this summer. Go back to Mac OS X for a second. Configure. All right, let me see how much I got right here. Oh, nope, hardware. Let's see. No. All right, four CPUs. You see that right there. Four CPUs. That's four gigabytes of RAM and four CPUs dedicated to this. Now, my Mac actually has a quad core processor, but it is the i7, so it the operating system sees it as eight cores. So I dedicated four, which is about half. All right, get out of that. And yeah, as you see, I got a computer nerd monitors right there. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. All right, get out of that. Got your show desktop button just like that. Google Chrome. Now Google Chrome doesn't open quite as fast as it does on my Mac, but this is Windows. It's only using it is a guest operating system with parallels. Got your source right there. I saw fly games Windows disk defragment. I can't defragment this drive because it's not technically a drive, it's a virtual hard disk. Recycling bin, 